Hey everyone, you are watching my Figma design tutorial for responsive dashboard design. So here we are in Figma and I have some local color styles available. Now first we create our artboard or a frame by selecting a frame or clicking F on keyboard. I'm selecting here MacBook Pro. Now what we have to do is we have to create five columns in our frame. So we will select layout grid from the right side panel and selecting grid columns instead of grid so as you can see we have count of five we'll change the gutter space to zero so that we can have 20 percent of the screen for our left side panel okay so we'll change it to zero and as you can see on the screen you we have five spaces or five lines so for creating a new side panel we'll create a new frame by selecting f to keyboard or selecting the top side top panel so creating a frame, uh, we'll drag that and just make sure that height is 900 and width should be the 20% of the whole screen. So it should be like 288 in this case, which is 1440 divided by 5. We'll give it a nice touch. We'll give it a blue color that we have in our local styles. Now for the rest of the area we have to create a new frame or a new content box as developers call it division box or div, div block okay so creating that frame would require us to have a height of 900 and width of 1152 which is uh, like a subtraction of 1440 minus 288 that we already have right so it would be like 80% of the total screen. We also give a color to this. So we have a background light blue color, which is a shade of blue that we have. So now we'll add constraints to both the frames. As we will select constraint to scale. Uh, this is very important actually to select scale constraint because whenever your screen will be stressed into any of the width, like share using any wide screen monitor on laptop, so you'll see that it will be having that 20% of the space for the left side panel that you just created. So here's a demonstration. Uh, I just multiplied the whole screen into two. So the layout grid we used for five columns automatically adjusted all the lines to the five blocks. And the side panel that we had is now stressed to 576 instead of 288 and also the right panel or the right area is now multiplied getting back to it we'll add some elements in this first of all we'll add a top bar so to create a new frame we'll add a frame and we'll change resize it basically and the width would be 1152 and the height will keep it somewhere like 96 I said color to this as well. So we'll select a darker shade for this. Now we'll add an ellipse of size 150 by 150 for an image. We'll set it to center and we'll set constraint to top and center. So now I'm giving it a color, a darker shade. For the content area, we are creating few margins. So to create that, we'll create a new frame. The width will be the same as 1152 and the height will be 4% of the total height so it would be like 900 divided by 100 into 4 that comes up as 36 so we will now give it a color a darker shade of blue and we will put in the bottom area of our screen and align it to right now we have to reduce the opacity so let's give it 50% we will duplicate it for the top margin as well so we'll place it on the top and the right of our total screen now we have to create the left margin in this case the height of the frame will remain same as the total height but the width will be the two percent of the 80 percent of the total screen so it would be 1152 divided by 102 which comes up as 23.04 we'll remove the 0.4 because we don't want any half pixel okay so we will place it on the left side of the frame and it will be under the second frame or the background frame that we have 
we'll keep aside for now and we'll duplicate it for the right margin. Now I'm changing the constraint of my top bar to stick to the top because I want it fixed. Let's rename all the frames that we have. The side panel, background, margins, top bar, everything will change. Now we'll set constraint of all the margins to scale from left and right and top to bottom. We'll set it to scale. Now for our data and other content, we'll create a content box. A new frame and we will align it to according our margins inside the background and we'll resize the frame accordingly uh, whatever margins we have set down let's rename this to content now we'll put all these frames inside the BG frame because of the background area that we want in, in the, of that 80% it's time to hide all the layouts and margins and just make sure to have scale constraint on each and every frame so if it's not there just change it to scale and then we'll dive into the code section of Figma here you can see selecting the side panel it's 80% to the right and background it's 20% to the left similarly the top bar is 20% to the left and height is 96 pixels but selecting on the content area its top is 14.67 just because we have already given height now let's jump into development and here you can see if i click on the inspect element i've created this whole layout and html and css so we'll check the height and width so as you can see i've copied the code the whole code of figma and it's 80 percent to the right as mentioned earlier we'll now check the background background area of the div block so it's 20 percent to the left and the main reason to do that is because of that flexibility in the responsive design we get so as you can see i'm resizing the width of the screen but totally it's taking 20 percent the side panel is taking 20 percent of the whole screen and the background or the content area is taking 80% of the whole screen no matter how white your screen is be it a USD monitor or a TV screen something like that but yeah it can use that whole width of screen into 20 and 80% so we are splitting up the whole division that's it from my side guys uh, Thanks for watching it till end and please share with the fellow designers and developers also and they can know about how we, we as a product designer design efficiently for developers and yes you can check out my Instagram, my dribble profile, thank you.